knowledge. Because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. And people seek instruction from his mouth. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with Levi, says the Lord Almighty. So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of love. So reads the word, and every word is the truth. Repeat after me. Living. Living. Lie. In 3D. Living life in 3D. So it's pure. I left my watch at home. Okay. I left my watch at the house. Living life in 3D. Manufacturing engineers live life and see life in 3D. Whatever man make, it has height, it has depth, and it has length. Is that right? Whatever you buy something in a box that shows you how tall it is and how wide it is and how thick it is, right? You can find that on a box of something that a man made. But the great engineer of life who created us by his hands created our lives in 3D. We are made of three components, mind, body, and soul. Another way to look at it is that we have an intellectual dimension, which is the mind. We have a physical dimension, which is the body. And we have a spiritual dimension, which is the soul. And the God that made us desires that we surrender every dimension of our lives to his lordship. Somebody say amen. amen. God desires every facet, every feature, every characteristic of your life be surrendered to his will for your life. Now some folks say, well, this is my life. I can do what I want with it, but on judgment day, God's going to hold you accountable for the life that you live because you did not create yourself. God created you. Can somebody say amen? God that created you is going to hold you accountable not for the life that you live, but the life that he designed for you to live. The life that he designed for you to live. That's the life that you will be held accountable for. And God views you in 3D. Somebody say amen. amen. Discipline. Say Dedication. Amen. Determination. 3D. That's how God looks at you. Especially when you call yourself a Christian. Mm. And we see in the book of Malachi. Malachi, amen, was the last prophet that spoke before John the Baptist herald that Christ was coming. And the Bible said between Malachi and John the Baptist there was 400 years without a word from the Lord. And one reason there was not a word from the Lord because God found that man became hard of hearing. Yeah. Mm. They only wanted to hear what they why y'all gonna say that? They only wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And because they did not want to hear and surrender and submit to his word, he hushed his mouth. And when God hushed his mouth, that's not a good thing. All right. mm. The book said in verse 1, he said, now you priests, this warning is for you. God wanted and wants his people to live a disciplined life. Somebody say disciplined. Discipline means that you got simple habits and practices that help you grow and develop and be strong in the Lord. And does God want you to be strong in the Lord? Huh? Does not the Bible say be strong in the Lord and in the what? power of his mind? God wants you to grow and become all that he desires for you to be. In order to do that, you've got to learn how to practice discipline. You've got to learn how to discipline yourself so you can walk in the will of God so that you, 
your works might be pleasing to God. Now, as a Christian, you got some discipline that God requires of you. And these disciplines is what you can see in Christ and the life that he lived. There are 12 of them. One is studying the word of God. Did not the Bible say study to show yourself approved? Another one is prayer. Mm -hmm. The Bible says pray without what? Ceasing. Another one is fasting. We don't like that one. Mm -hmm. That's when you give up something and sacrifice to draw yourself closer to the Lord. That's when you give up eating for a time or, or drinking water for a time or, or watching TV for a time to draw close to God. We don't like to give up nothing. Another one is confession. Somebody say confession. Yeah, God, you're supposed to live a life of confession. Why? Because we all have what? Sin. And the Bible says confess your what? Sin. And because we have sin, God wants us to own our sin. He wants us to go, Lord, I have what? Sin. And come short of the glory of God. You're supposed to live a repentant life. A repentant life is a life of confession of where God has shown you that you have fallen short. Is worship. We're at a worship service right now. That's why our minds are supposed to be focused on what? God. Not how the choir sang. Huh? Not who heard and who didn't come. Our minds are supposed to be on the Lord. Not put up a problem that, that you left at the house. When you step in the house of God, God wants your undivided attention. Jesus said, look unto me, how ye in the earth will be saved. The Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. The Bible said, look unto Jesus, the author of the future of faith. Your mind is supposed to be on Christ. The reason why some of us come in one way and leave out the same way, because we're never connected with God. Fellowship. We don't like that one either. Fellowship is spending time with your fellow believers. Okay. Too many of us come in the church to leave out the church. We don't see you till you get ready to come back again. Right. Come on, somebody. Some don't stay when we have dinner. Hello. And the truth is, we don't do enough fellowship right here. And so we got to improve in that area because how can you get to know somebody if you don't spend no time together? We got to go walking down the aisle saying I do and don't really know one another. And guess what? That's not God's will. Even the blues man say take time to know. If you think y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning, we're supposed to be spending time with each other. Fellowship. Another discipline you're supposed to practice is rest. R-E-S-T. How many of y'all really get some rest? Honestly. God gave us Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was meant for rest. To take time to focus and meditate on God. The Bible says six days you should labor, but on the seventh day you should do no labor. We be going from one end to another every single day of our life and wonder why we're falling apart. Wonder why we're so tired. We don't ever get no rest. The Bible said the other thing we have to do is celebrate. Now we love that one. Y'all ain't gonna say it. Y'all quiet this morning. We love to celebrate. We celebrate birthdays and we celebrate marriages and, and then some folks done got so bold they celebrate divorce. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I'm finally left that joke. <laughs> Get the girl together. I finally left that joke. <laughs> Let's party. Yeah. God wants to celebrate. Uh, that means enjoying each other's company, making merry, having fun. Y'all have fun. Y'all better have, have fun. Yeah. Some folks look at here funny than y'all were talking about the Lord. I sure do talk about the Lord. I talk about him in my sleep in the name. I dream about him. I find myself preaching in my sleep. But guess what? I can still enjoy. Sometimes I can just look at my wife and make some goofy eyes and we got simple fun and, and, and we can just 
just love on each other just by making funny faces at one another. And after 32 and 32 years, that's still a blessing, ain't that right? That you can look at somebody and still find joy in them. Look, you, you ought to be able to say, go celebrate the birthday, celebrate the hope, celebrate for retirement, celebrate, enjoy one another. That's in the Bible. Right? Trees of the tabernacle. Alright? That God ought, God ought to celebration. You ought to celebrate life. You ought to celebrate the people in your life. I was just at a 90th birthday party yesterday of a lady that I used to pastor. Uh, 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 I'm teen years ago, but I'm still in the family. Pastor, we want you to come and pray. And guess what? I showed up to pray. Why? I'm celebrating somebody who always opened a door for me. Still calling me pastor. I ain't pocket up since 2008. Celebrate folk. So it seems spiritual discipline service. We don't like that one either. We like to be served, but we don't like to serve others. Serving is supposed to be, as a Christian, a normal part of your life. Serving is an act of love. And you serve in little ways. I serve up cheese toast. At uh, 5 in the morning. For Sister Reed, I do. She likes cheese toast. So I serve, I serve her. Yeah. I, I don't cook cheese toast. So I serve cheese toast. So. Why? Well, I'm, I'm her husband. So when I cook, I'm serving my family. That's the way I look at it. I want God to be pleased. I want them to be pleased. I want my son to see how to serve his family. I want my daughter to find a man that don't mind serving her. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Too many times we so selfish, we look for somebody to get over on. Amen. Another thing is generosity. Sunday school, I would listen to you this morning. Generosity. If God didn't give to you, what you ought to do? You ought to share what you have. All right? God didn't give you everything he gave you for you to keep it to yourself. We not know God made sunshine, he shared with you. God made rain, he shared with you. Because you didn't have no sunshine, no rain, you wouldn't have no collard green, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You wouldn't have no peas and no potatoes and tomatoes, whatever you want to say. You wouldn't have none of it unless God shared his blessing with you. God wants you to have the same attitude. That's the attitude we grew up on. Mama and them had some sugar, the neighbor had some coffee. They shared what they had one with another. Man, we're so stingy. You got to know I ain't got no, I know you're lying. <laughs> well, if I give it to them one time, they're going to keep asking. <laughs> another one is chastity. We don't like that one either. Chastity. Sexual. Purity. Huh? Sexual purity. Having sex according to the will of God. Mm. Sex, we don't like that. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, Well, I ain't gonna get mad without <clears throat> checking stuff out. Do y'all hear me? A preacher said, I'm not going to get married to a woman without realizing whether or not we are sexually compatible. And so you're going to stand in the pulpit, you're going to tell folks to abstain from sex, and now you're testifying that you're going to have sex with somebody according against the will of God, and now you're going to have the nerve to declare to folks what they are. And chastity now don't mean just keep your hand to yourself. It also means keep your mind to yourself. It means keep your mouth to yourself. In other words, be pure in your thoughts, be pure in your speech, and enjoy your husband or your wife. And right, so three. You better say it, girlfriend. The last thing on this list is another one I like making disciples. We don't like that. As I would tell them, but they might cuss me out. I would tell them about what you did for me, but they don't want to hear it, Pastor. They don't want to hear it. No, baby. Jesus said, go and make disciples. That's not a pastor job. That's a Christian 
job. The first place you need to be making disciples is in your own house. Because you have said now through the years, charity started home. And before you come to church and straighten folk out, make sure your house straighten out. Now some folk try to come to straighten the church out and your house is jacked up. Go get your house straightened. Then you can come and share with somebody else what they need to do. How they need. Let us see you doing it first. Living life in 3D. You see the text. Sister Golden God wanted his servant, Brother Watkins, to be disciplined, to practice those things that would help them to grow in the knowledge of who he was. And when you read the text, you see clearly what he, he wants. What God wants is for the people that are called by his name is for those people to honor his name. Yeah. Is that what the Bible said? Verse 2 said, if you do not listen, your text may say, lay it to what? Lay it to heart. That means think about what you are doing. Think about who you are dealing with. He says, what I really want from you, I want you to honor my name. Anybody heard the model prayer? Our Father, which I did have a living, say what? Hallowed, holy, magnificent, marvelous, praiseworthy, be your name. And when you live your life, when you let your little light shine, God wants somebody to taste him in your life and make them want to praise his name. Ain't that what Jesus said? Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works. And what is that? And praise and honor and magnify and glorify his name. The way you live your life, God wants somebody to taste it, man. That you got a right relationship with him and make them want to get to know them, get to know him for themselves. But the Bible teaches that God is talking to these preachers that's supposed to know right from wrong. And he said, now look here, y'all not giving me the glory that's due unto my name. And so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to curse you. Do y'all hear what the book said? We don't believe the Bible still got blessing and cursing up in there. But the reason why the world is in trouble right now, because there's a lot of folk walking under the curse. They're living under the curse. They're talking up a curse. They're thinking up a curse. Why? Because they're not concerned about doing the will of God. They're so proud in themselves. They're proud to tell you what they think. But God ain't told you to tell folk what you think. The Bible said that to him that has the word of God, speak the word of God tastefully. In other words, if you know the word, God wants you to tell somebody what he said. Yeah. Remember right? He said, I'm going to send a curse on you. Anybody believe that God is a man of his word? Then I want you to look around your country and see are we living blessed? Are we living cursed? I want you to look around me. And he said, and I will curse your what? Blessing. The stuff you got. Huh? It won't be blessed. And that's upsetting to me. Uh, amen. Because you can go to the store and you can Buy some thousand dollar appliance. It worked for three months. Y'all didn't say nothing. 
you used to go to the store and buy that appliance and cost like two hundred dollars, and it lasts for twenty years. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And look, we're living under a curse because we don't give God the glory that do unto His name. And He said, not only that, He said, now I'm gonna, I'm not only gonna curse what you got. He said, now I'm gonna curse your children. Now, like, did y'all read that in the text? Uh, when He said your descendants, uh, when He said your seed, uh, He talked about your sons and your daughters. Uh, if you don't live right, uh, how you expect you gonna have a blessed life? Uh, if you don't give God the glory, uh, how you expect your children gonna have a blessed life? Uh, everybody got to bow down. Uh, the Bible says. At the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow, and every tongue got to confess that Jesus is Lord. If you ain't gonna give God the glory, why should He give you the glory? If you ain't gonna bless His name, why should He bless you? You better wake up. You said not only that, Brother Jones. I'm going to smear you in feces. That's right there in the text. In other words, I'm going to put you to what? Shame. Because you don't put me to what? Shame. That's what the text did right there. When you put him to shame, what are you going to do to you? Did you hear what Paul said? So a man what? So? That's it what? Reap? Huh? God wants you to live this way. But the next thing, He wants you to live dedicated. Levi, amen, amen, was one of the sons of Israel. And God made him and his family priest unto the Lord. And Eli was dedicated to God. And you might say, well, preacher, what does God want? from me. God wants you to be dedicated to him. And, and when you hear God in, in verse 4 uh, all the way down to verse 6, you see God talking about what a dedicated life looks like. Amen. He said, now, and you will know that I have sent this warning uh, so that my covenant with Levi make a tea. You, you hear what God's saying right there? I want to keep blessing you, amen. But you got a role to play in it. I, I want to keep showering you in with good things. But you got something that you got to do. Because some folk want uh, everything for nothing. Can I get a witness? They want to get a job. They want the paycheck, but they don't want to do no work. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Some folk want to get married, but they don't want to stay faithful. You, you got to do something if you want stuff to work out. And, and so the Bible said, my covenant was with him. God said I'm in agreement uh, with, he, with Levi. He, if he walk right, I'm going to bless him right. He said I made a covenant of life and peace. Anybody, can anybody up in here stand a, a life of, of, of blessing and peace, amen? A, a joyful life, a pleasant life, a good life. Well, this is how I done. He said now the way I was dealing with him because of who I am, it called for reference. That means respect. If you believe that God is who he is. You ought to give him respect. You ought not take his name in vain. You ought not let his name come out of your mouth. You ought to please live your life to matters on him. Somebody ought to thank God for knowing you. And he said, look at him now. Look at him now. I called for reverence. And he actually gave it to me. He revered my name. He stood in awe. Anybody come in church and stand in awe of the Lord? Don't focus on me. You're not supposed to focus on the preacher. You're supposed to focus on the God that sent the preacher. Because as I give you pastors, according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding, your pastor can't save nobody. He can't save himself. But the God that I serve, anybody know that God, he can do anything but the fail. He said, I will never leave you, no forsake He's the breeze over trunk water. He's the water in dry places. Whatever you need, God heals. And if you give him respect, He's going to give you blessing. If you praise him, when the praise will go up, the blessing come down. If you honor him, he's going to honor you. Yeah. Yeah. Eli, Levi, was dedicated. 
Verse 6 says, true instruction. All that means the word of truth was in his mouth. What did Jesus say about that? If you are my disciple, if you continue my word, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? To make you free. He said the word of truth was in his mouth. He wasn't a lying person. Look at that book. He said nothing false. He wasn't no deceiver. He wasn't no liar. And not only that, he walked with me in peace and the rightness. He wanted a man, me and him, to be on good terms. Some folk try to be on good terms with everybody but God. The problem with that, you might be in good terms with your mama, but your mama ain't got no hell in hell to put you in. Some folk want to be in the cool clique. I got one clique. His name is Jesus. Me and him clique, that's fine. I don't have to be in the clique over here. I don't have to be in the clique over there. I'm a Christian. I love Christ. I like walking with Christ. I like talking with Christ. I like trying to be who Christ called me to be. Eli, Levi was dedicated to the Lord. So dedicated. But the book said he turned many from sin. You, you, you want to know what God wants from you? If you've been saved by the glory, God wants you to turn people from their sin. And don't listen to the devil because the devil tell you them, them for life ain't none of your business. All the devil trying to get you to do is turn from doing the will of God. Because if you're saved, if you're saved, brother, so to speak, it's because somebody got in your business. Big mama them didn't mind getting in your business. They said, when you go somewhere, act like you've been raised and keep your dressed hell down. They didn't mind getting in your business. They will tell you, don't hang out with the people at the dark end of the street. Because the people don't mean you no good. They say, don't get in the wrong car. Because if that car gets caught, that means you got caught. Watch who you hang with. Just because somebody else do wrong, child, that don't mean you have to do wrong. They got in your business. They didn't mind. And some of them folk that live next to you, they got in your business too. They want your mama, not your daddy. But if they saw you out the street, hey, y'all stop that fighting. Y'all love on one another. And sometimes they would get a switch and tan your high. Then call your mama and say, I'll tan they high. And then your mama would get another switch and tan your high again. They were dedicated to one another. That's the bit that takes care of the people that's in the middle. We don't lost that. Distract you from God's will for 
in your life. To be, to have determined, that determination, meaning that you're not going to resist God's will for your life. What did him right say? I know I am a child of God. Although I move so slow, I'm going to wait until the Spirit comes. And I'm going to move at God's command. That's what it means to be determined. And God said, looking at his church, I don't see much determination in you. The most important ministry of any church ain't the choir singing. It ain't the deacons serving. It ain't cooking food in the kitchen. The most important ministry in the church is the preaching and teaching of the word of God. Am I right, Brother Carl? He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The most important task that the preacher has, he said, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, with all long suffering and doctrine. That the preacher's main job. And now we got preachers, they jump on the piano. They are better lead in the choir. And God bless them. And they got all them gifts. But if you do all that and you fail to preach the God, you fail to preach the gospel. Anybody know the power? Paul said about the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes. We got too many preachers that become like coaches. They try to teach you how to get some money. I tell you how to get some money. Give God the best that you got. Give Him your heart. Give Him your mind. Give Him your soul. What the Bible says. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you do right by the Lord, don't you believe that the Lord will do right by you? But these preachers, these preachers, the Bible says, the lips of a preacher ought to preserve. Knowledge. In other words, he got to study to show himself approved. Why? Because you're supposed to be the messenger of the Almighty God. Somebody coming, seeking some information. And if I'd have been in Sunday school, and if one of them in Sunday school, the first question I asked the Sunday school, except one or two occasions, am I right, Mother Long? I forgot to ask. Does anybody have a question? The reason why I'm supposed to ask is somebody got a question. Your pastor's supposed to be here leading you in a Righteousness, I will give you pastors according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what the Bible says. And so, if you got a question, then you need to talk about it. Why? Because it's my job to illuminate the word of God. We have to discover the will of God so you can walk in the way of God. Anybody here thank God that He is God. But the Bible says in verse number eight, but you have turned from the way by teaching. By your teaching has caused folk to stumble. Be careful when you're going to talk about the word of God. The Bible said, Be not many masters, knowing that you shall receive the strict of judgment. If you're going to open your mouth and tell somebody about the word of God, you better know what you're talking about. Because when you leave for a strength, God going to hold you accountable. You better pray. God, give me some understanding so I don't leave nobody astray. Anybody can thank God. That you got the Holy Ghost, if you got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will let you know. What the fuck is just thinking and shaking? I'm trying to do right by the living God. The Bible said, You have violated my covenant with Levi. In other words, you ain't faithful to me like your daddy was faithful. You ain't, you ain't disciplined like your daddy was disciplined. You ain't dedicated like your daddy was dedicated. I'm happy there's a folk up in here that can talk about. The testimony of your mother and father, the question is, are you as dedicated as they was? Do you serve your church like they did? Do you serve your community like they did? It's a shame to talk about their testimony. And you done fell off from doing what you've been supposed to do. You done fell off from doing the way you were trained. It's a shame to talk about their testimony. Well, you're not living.
living life in 3D. But if you, the book said this church is supposed to be a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. Y'all hear me? God is talking to you in the text. A priest is a minister, a servant. When God saved you, you have a ministry. If you don't believe it, go to the book of Romans, chapter 12. It's going to talk about spiritual gifts. If you don't believe it, go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 12. It's going to talk about spiritual gifts. If you don't believe it, go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Yeah. It's gonna talk about spiritual gifts. The pastor ain't the only minister in the church. Everybody has a ministry. And God's gonna hold you accountable for your ministry. But these people despise God. And so they despise the ministry. And what happened? You see verse 9? God despised them and called them to be humiliated. You hear folks? down in the church today. Why are they down in the church? They say it's so much hypocrisy in the church. They got their picks and they got their chooses. Can somebody testify? Some folk can get away with everything. And some folk they try to put out for doing a little or nothing. Why? They got their picks and their chooses. Some churches is all about the money. If you got some money, they get somebody. They break it down to the front. If you're poor, they sit you in the back. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That was somebody. Look at here. When you do these kind of things, you shame the name of the Lord. You show that his word don't mean nothing to you. But I'm going to tell you what. You can't be a Christian without the word. But the Bible said, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Anybody can thank God for the word. Without the word, you don't know which way you're going? Because David said, No words left unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Without the word, you don't have no knowledge of God. Because the Bible said, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And down around the 14th verse. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. I wonder what your relationship is with the word. You're supposed to be like the Berean Christians. Pastor the Berean Christ out of Malachi. Chapter 2. You're supposed to be like the Berean Christians. Go home and read it for yourself to make sure that you understand what the preacher put the like. Go home and read it for yourself to make sure that you know what God's will is for your life. Too many folk come to church and look for the preacher to get a crunk. The preacher's job is not to get you crunk. The preacher's job is to get you taught that you can walk in the will of God. The preacher's job is to get you hype. The preacher's job is preach till you get holy. So he said, I am holy. Be ye holy because I am holy. Anybody got a phrase up in your lips because you know holiness is of the Lord. And if you got his holy word in you, if you got it in your heart, if you got it in your mind, anybody glad that word will make you holy. But if Paul said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. Trying to live life in 3D. You've got to have some discipline. Anybody glad that Jesus has some discipline? He, he went down to the forty-two generations, healed the sick, raised the dead, fed the hungry. He had some dedication. He said, I didn't come to do all will, but the will of him that sent me. Anybody glad? He has some determination. He said, I have come to seek and to save that which was 
cross. Anybody can thank God that Jesus lived his life in three days. He prayed and he fasted. He proclaimed the word of God. Anybody can thank God that when God got you to do something, he does the church to let you know it's possible. And you might say, preach this to your heart. But all you need is the Holy Spirit. After the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you shall receive power. Anybody can got some power up in here. But praise God. Anybody can thank God that when he got you to do something, he did the church to let you know it's possible. And you might say, preach this to your heart. But all you need is the Holy Spirit. After the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you shall receive power. Holy Ghost will come upon you, you shall receive power, and you shall be my witness. What's wrong with your witness? If you got power, you ought to witness. You ought to testify. You ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. The Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord, let us say so. You ought to talk about how he delivered you, how he picked you up out of the fucking mountain clay. How he set your feet on the side of the rock to say, You ought to testify. You don't cuss like you used to cuss. The way you treat folk, you treat them better the way they treat you. That's evidence that God is working in your life. When Jesus came down, he did himself. He said, I got to go to Jerusalem. I'm not going to let nobody turn me around. They hung him high. They stressed him wide. He dedicated himself. He said, if they said, if you be who you say you are, come down. But he wouldn't come down. He was determined to see it. They pay so much attention to what's going on around them. They blotted out God. And when they look at God, I'm like Pilate. I can't find no fault in him. He's perfect in every way. If I ain't got nothing but Jesus, my soul satisfied. I ain't always been able to say that. I want some junk so I can be justified in the world. Do y'all hear me? But the word told me, no, baby, Jesus is all you need. Because you got Jesus, you got everything. But this is your turn of the program. The Bible said our citizenship is in heaven. The way you live your life down here is supposed to represent where you live. For your citizenship. Money ought not be your master. Huh? You ought not be tripping over these human relationships down here. Yeah, some folk don't like you, so. The truth is, you ain't like some folk either. Can I get a witness? But them folk that don't like you, they gave you an opportunity to show that you're a citizen of what? Heaven. What do citizens of heaven do? They love folk. We what? God. Is that you today? Are you living life in 3D? How's your word like? As you can tell from the text, God said, when y'all ain't working my word, y'all not living like I told you to live. Because if you ain't in the word, you don't know how he told you to live. You know what you heard. But the book said, Jesus said, search the scripture. That's Y'all hear what God said? God told you as a Christian to search the scripture. Huh? 
For in them you think you have eternal life. He said, they be they that testify of me. You ain't made no good Christian if you're not in that Bible. Have you memorized any scriptures? You ought to be memorizing scriptures every day. Why, why can I say that? Did you read the text? The priest, the Bible said they are supposed to retain knowledge. And you say, ain't no priest. You are in the spirit. You are a priest. What do you think we're going to reign as when we go to glory? The Bible said kings and priests. Is that right, Brother, Brother Connie? Yeah, you're a seven God. You're supposed to be walking in what you're going to do when you if so get, get ready for where you're going. You're a priest. Folk got to come to you and get some direction on which way to take to make it to glory. You shouldn't have to call the pastor and say, Pastor, so-and-so is looking for some direction. You got, you got the map. You're supposed to be studying your map so you can help them get to where they need to go. And men, men, the greatest responsibility for the word in your house is you. Priest, provider, protector. Men, the greatest person responsible for the word of God in your house is you. You're supposed to train your family in the way they should go. Now, let me ask you a question. We don't like the way folk talk about the church. We don't. We, it gets on our nerves. But the truth is, have not we earned some of that reputation? Mm -hmm. We falling over, we falling out over stupid stuff like what color the cop it gonna be? Yep. People leaving the church because of who they elected as pastor. What kind of testimony is that? That's not no Christian testimony. That's a devilish testimony. Why do we do that? Because we're not allowing the Word and Holy Spirit to have the right of way in our life. That's why it is. And let me say this. Don't cause people that you love to cause you to compromise with what God said because you're supposed to love him more than anybody. In other words, if your family don't want to live out the word of God, you don't stop being who God called you to be to be in good with them because they ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. Amen. And guess what? The church doing that. The church doing that. When we get around the church folk, we talk nice. When we get around them other folk, we talk like them. But guess what the Bible said? God said, when you do that, you're not, you're not honoring my name. And what did it say? I'm going to curse you. Why? You cursing me. You're not calling the folk to seek me. Y'all remember Moses? He served God for 40 years. 40 years. Then, Sister so, Duffy, so, so, right at the end, right at the end, right at the end, God gave him a word. Go speak to the rock. These people are thirsty. What Moses did, he got in the what? He got in the flesh. He took God's rod that God gave him, the rod of authority. Moses took God's rod of authority and smote the rod. Now that called the people out of their names. What God's come in, Moses? Come in. You did not sanctify me. You didn't, you didn't honor me. You didn't glorify me before these people. Guess what Moses couldn't do? He couldn't go in the promised land. God said, no, you can't go in the promised land. You're finna die. Moses cursed himself. Here's what's funny about that. You read the book of Deuteronomy, you'll hear Moses telling the people, God said for you, before you two rode, a road of blessing and a road of cursing. Y'all be worried about the preacher. Don't worry about the preacher. He got to stand before the word. Same God you do. Moses was the leader of Israel. What happened to him? God slew him. Why? He did not sanctify God. Don't worry about the preacher. God got him. Just like God got the deacons. God got the choir. God got, God got everybody. And Jesus said, I'm going to give them whatever reward they work for. All right. So you said, what's wrong with the church? We, we not under the word. And when you're not under the word, you're not acting as a church. You're acting as a heathen. And if you act as a heathen, you'll get the reward of a what? Of a heathen. Make sure that you rededicate yourself to the ministry of the word of God. You open up that book and you read it for yourself. God ain't never told you to depend on your pastor for the word. 
You're supposed to depend on him to be faithful at preaching the word and living it out. Amen. And I've tried to do both of them before you. Both of them. What bad report you got on me in the street? What's the street committee done said? Like, your pastor's over here. He's out there doing this. He messing up on the wife. What bad report you got on me? I strive every day to be who God called me to be. One, because God is looking at me. Two, because I got a family that see me. They know me behind the closed door. And I'm going to tell you who they get. They get the same one you see. I ain't got no different church life than I got a home life. My house is a sanctuary for the word of God. The first thing I do when God wakes me up is go get the book. Every day. Every day. Now I don't take Saturday and Sundays off. Every day. Why? That's what he called me to do. That's the example I'm supposed to set before you. Those people who get those texts, that's, that's proof to you. That's proof to you. I'm trying to be who God called me to be. I want everything he got coming to me. Everything. Yeah, I'm fussing. But if you look in the text, who else fussing? God's fussing. He, he's not happy with the way his people are living. We got to do better. We're supposed to be the light for the world. How are we going to help the world if we can't help ourselves? I'm through fussing. Who said amen? You wrong for that. <laughs> you wrong for that. You wrong, you wrong for telling the truth. Because I do got another church service. 